Okay, so I want to talk about this because with the way that men and women are so screwed up, for the average guy who's like, hey, you know, I do want to find a girl who's sexy, right? I want a girl I want to bang. I want a girl that cooks for me. I want all of these things. It looks like it's going to be a little bit more difficult than we thought because now we have a new competitor to females, which is the OnlyFans digital AI. And a lot of people have brought these images up um, of telling AI to sort of create the perfect woman. And I love how she's in lingerie and got a cross on, right? This is the, this is the modern woman. She's got the cross on and she's there. And this is fake. This is, from my understanding, this is 100% a fake image. There is nothing real about this. Um, with the value of what a woman is, what is the difference in the future of a modern woman and an AI woman like this. This is what I was saying about fifth wave feminism. I think that we've commodified too much of being a woman. And I don't think we've commodified being a man to that extreme, unless you look at men purely as success objects, because we do get access to our male tax paying base. We'll get your money no matter what. But when we're talking about the commodification of women, it starts with birth control, which means we can control our reproduction. We can turn our ovulation on or off. And then it goes to termination of pregnancy. And then it goes to surrogacy. And then it goes to, well, here's also this AI. And then it goes to, here's these robotic women. Women are doing it to themselves. You know what I mean? At, at least that's my opinion on it because this was the liberation that feminists wanted was to minimize the differences between the sexes. Did you ever think that that's what made a woman special and that's what made a man special that spiritual experience between the masculine and the feminine before we get rid of it why don't we find out why it's there in the first place so i i greatly favor gender roles because it adds more value i want to say to my marriage we're both very happy with the, the dynamics that we have going on and all the people that i saw that were married the longest and happiest the longest and still having sex they had more traditional or conventional gender roles for sure. So I don't know what's going to happen to women if we get the AI robotic hoo-hahs, which we already do. By the way, we totally do. I worked at an adult couple store for about a year. I was just curious and they paid really, really well. Like I was making so much money. I made a thousand dollars on a bonus around Christmas time, but there's already machines that are out there and men do buy them. So what are you going to bring to the table in a world like that where you have to compete with these robots? You know, I think at the end of the day, people are going to want the real thing. They're going to want a real relationship. But I think that it's becoming harder and harder for folks to date. I'm not even sure if average is really doing it. I, I know for a fact that women are not marrying your average male who is who would be five foot nine. He'd be making 50,000 a year and he would be overweight or obese. Women aren't even marrying those guys. So marriage and relationships are probably going to start being more and more the exception to the rule if they're not already. Well, and that's what I was wondering if why even marriage rates are going down or people are waiting later is because mm -hmm. the pool isn't, uh, the pool isn't tempting. Like, like, and I mean this because, you know, I was, uh, watching this, this video clip of this guy. He had to have lived in California. Um, cause he said that him and his partner hate that phrase made a combined $120,000 a year. They paid off all their debts, paid off their cars, saved up $40,000, and the best house they could afford was unlivable. It was actually genuinely like condemned. Um, they couldn't afford uh, you know, to even to even buy a house. And you go, yeah, if even if you get married and you get together and you both work and you live the feminist, you know, iconic lifestyle, and you don't even have basic living standards of having a home or to build generational wealth or anything, then you know, it comes to a point to where it's like, Marriage is actually just a survival method. And if you're surviving on your own, then why complicate it? Because you could survive in a shit house without the drama, without the relational issues, without the the gender differences, without the fights. And it basically is just adding complication because you're not improving your life by even being together. It's just complicated, but there's less, maybe less lonely is like the only like positive aspect that gets developed. And so marriage, you don't get a virgin. You're not getting, uh, they, they, you don't want to have children. 
She's not even that good looking because all the good looking girls are the whores. Um, you know, she's annoying. She's not realistic. Cause I feel like today's world, the women are either whores and unrealistic or they're like church girls and unrealistic. And then they're both going to divorce for the same reasons. They both don't understand men and they're not taught about men and they're not being taught accurately. Um, and so then guys just go, well, what's the point? Like, and that's why they're all turning gay. You can go get sex from dudes and I mean, you get, you get HIV and diseases, but with the way girls are, you can get that too. And I think people just aren't getting married. They're all turning gay and nobody really sees the purpose or the function or the understanding. And it's like, is that really reality? Is that the world that we live in? Or if not, where do we actually find women that are the things that we want, that we desire? Mm -hmm. I don't think that you find them. I think that you build your worth in society as a man. So a woman's worth, a lot of it is going to be based off of beauty. That's just how it is. Okay. If I was born a supermodel, I would have had beauty contracts and I would have been making thousands of dollars, if not more a month or a year. Okay. I was born with the genetics that I have and it's you know, obviously influenced how I move out there in the dating market. But a lot of this stuff as a woman is in your control, you can totally control your weight. You can control how you dress and you can control how you act to a degree outside of, you know, born personality, um, experiences or components. But for men, if you just stay on your purpose and you learn some game and you're familiar with how to socialize with women, the women will find you. If you make yourself valuable enough, they're not going to help but to notice you. But I don't know if young men don't believe that or if they see it and they see that it's hard work and they don't want to do it. But any man that's done it will turn around and tell you, yes, I've had way more options since I increased how I look, being in the gym, putting on muscle, and since I increased my social status. But the thing about it is that even so, you still have to deal with a crappy pool of women because women like to date up and they can date up because eggs are expensive and sperm is cheap. At least at the top, though, you can eventually have your pick of the litter for sure. I totally agree with that. And that's what I think men should do. For men, I think maybe they have to, you know, date older <laughs> and well, maybe men have to start dating when they're older and they might have to date women that are younger. That might be just how it plays out for those successful men out there. Yeah, this is so I want to be careful before I, I preclude this next part of what you're saying. I am not advocating for, um, you know, 14 and 15 year olds to get married. I just want to bring up another society, which is Saudi Arabia. I, I just don't touch that kind of stuff because I think um, not because I'm afraid to. But I think regionally, everybody, when it comes to age um, uh, of like what I hate using the even phrase age of consent, but like age of when you could legally get married. Um, I think the age of consent is already a, a, a reductionist term because this is the idea of like the age when you can just start having sex. But I think that the age was actually meant to be the age when you could legally get married with the assumption that sex would be inside of marriage so you could reproduce. And that's cheapened it to saying like, yeah, when you're saying 16 year olds should have the right to sex, then you're just basically saying, yeah, 16 year olds can be whores and have sex with adults rather than is 16 and age to get married. So I think that's broken down in society. I think we've really reduced that. And it's basically become a discussion of when you're allowed to be a legal whore or when you're not. And I don't like that. An, a culture that hasn't gone down that road would be Saudi Arabia. Uh, are you familiar with Destiny? Yes. Okay, so he got in a clip recently, pretty, pretty caught up talking about how he found 15 and 16 year olds hot. And he started defending himself about how the age of consent is 16 in the UK and whatever. And I'm not here to argue with him. Okay. I, I again, I just no, say, go. they, with they are, they are, what? they are. I went, I went to universal studios with my brother. I've got family in Florida. So it was some kind of prom night. I don't know, but if you look at a group of teen boys and teen girls, the teen boys they look like boys, the teen girls, they look like women. They are physically attractive, but that's because they're fertile. Now, granted, it seems like women are getting fertile at younger and younger ages that we haven't seen before. And that's probably due to an access of calories that we haven't had in our evolutionary history. But you can't 
deny that, but this is where we deny women's biology. We don't want to say that you become sexually attractive when you're fertile and that gets in the way of actually helping women because young women need to know, oh, okay, so I, I feel like a girl, but my body looks like a woman. So I have to be more careful around men now, which is a much more practical conversation to have than to not entertain it at all and pretend like it's not there. Of course, we're not advocating for child marriage. I'm pregnant with a daughter right now. I would never try to marry my daughter off in America at the age of 15. But I do need to have a very practical conversation with her about, hey, you have breasts now, you have hips now, this is what life is going to be like now, and you have to be a little bit more guarded. You don't have to be afraid of men, but you need to understand that you look like a whole snack, and sometimes somebody's going to try to come and get the snack. That's all it is, is to give them awareness. I got to talk about Pixatine, which are nicotine-infused toothpicks. Now, you guys know I love a good smoke every once in a while, but of course, many of you guys might smoke more than just once in a while, or you might have an addiction to a vape or something else. You know, there's restrictions on where you can smoke. You know, it's not great for your health, and maybe you've tried alternatives, but it's really hard to stop doing that. Now, there is an alternative to this that has no restrictions in planes, trains, and automobiles, comes in amazing flavors like winter fresh and cinnamon, as well as tobacco and other amazing flavors. They're small, they're portable, can be used literally basically anywhere, including a plane, train, or automobile. And uh, that is the toothpicks from pixatine.com slash Elijah. Now, when you go to pixatine.com slash Elijah, that's P-I-X-O-T-I-N-E.com slash E-L-I-J-A-H, you get 10% off, I mean, 20% off, actually even better, 20% off the entire store. It's even better. I forgot they have such a good deal for you guys. These uh, give you that same nicotine buzz. And if you're 21 or older, you might find this is a better alternative. You don't have the smell. You don't have the smoke. You don't have the restrictions. You get the same buzz. It's a good product. And I know a lot of people have used these instead of doing other activities that could be harmful. They can't, I can't say that they can help you quit, but I can tell you I've had friends who have stopped smoking and use these instead. Those are my friends. That's their experience. Maybe you just try that or you just want to try these as well because you're tired of the restrictions on smoking. Go to pixatine.com slash Elijah, P-I-X-O-T-I-N-E.com slash E-L-I-J-A-H. That's pixatine.com slash Elijah for 20% off all of these amazing products. Check it out. Let's